at Saw Cruiser at the England kit shoot today. First impressions of the kit? Yeah, it's beautiful, mate. Really nice. Um, we were just talking to the Oxen guys then. They said that they dropped the red out and made the blue because navy is such a popular colour and you know it's in 70% of wardrobe. So yeah, really, really nice and lively. And you must be looking forward to potentially wearing that at the World Cup this year. Oh yeah, one of the biggest honours you can get in it coming on England shirt. Um, I've managed to do it once before in my career and absolutely loved it on back of a win in France. So yeah, I'd love to do that in the World Cup. You mentioned debuting for England this year. This year you represent the All Stars. Can you just talk us a bit about that? Because I know you feel very passionately about representing your, your native land as well. Yeah, um, it was a good chance to represent my mum's side of the family. Obviously, I was born in uh, Swaziland. Um, uh, she was born there, and all her family's there. And I come over to England when I was only three years old, and I used to go back every year. And then when I signed professional at 16, uh, I've not been back since. So. You know, it's just nice to give my mum something to shout about on her side of the family. Obviously, I wear the, the leaning name uh, that comes from my dad's side of the family, and you know, I, I represent England. Um, so yeah, that all stars. It means a lot to me, and it's important that I get to celebrate my mum's heritage and, and my heritage as well. It must be really special that you've managed to get to do that, and what an opportunity to manage to represent both sides of your family. Yeah, really special, and just making your mum happy, no matter how small or how big it is, an occasion um, to make my mum happy of what I'm doing and proud of me. And, you know, for her to shout and take loads, she was taking photos, loads of photos, she loved it. And obviously I had the Swazi badge on, on in my kit as well. So, yeah, it was a really proud moment of mine, just, just as proud as I am, you know, to represent England. And whilst a proud moment, an opportunity for you as well, because obviously you weren't in the England side, but still a chance to prove yourself to Sean in that fixture. Yeah, um, obviously that's a byproduct of, of um, of what happened, but like I say, I'll, I'll, I'll go in there to represent my mom and the Swazi side of it. Um, and then obviously you're on show, it's, it's one of the biggest stages, you know, it's seen as an international game, really. Um, so it's always a chance to prove yourself. But yeah, I just tried doing my job, um, you know, try, try, try playing to the best of my ability. That's what I always do every time I take the field, not not, not getting overawed with the occasion too much. Um, but yeah, uh, such an enjoyable fixture and one that I hope the Super League keep in. And in terms of you personally, what, what do you need to do in, the, in these next 10, 12 weeks to ensure you're in that squad? Um, I feel like coming towards the back end is the most important bit of the season. You've got to be playing your best rugby. Um, I try not to change too much, uh, depending on the occasion or how big the game is or how small the game is. It's just about, for me personally, it's about getting consistency in what I'm doing. Um, not having a game where I'm a 10 out of 10 and having another game where I'm a 6 out of 10. You can't afford to do that um, if you want to play for England. You need to be you know, an 8, 9 out of 10 for, for most of the season, if not all of it. Um, and that's what you see, the people who've represented England for a long period of time and, and got so many caps, that it's, it's for that reason. It's not for, um, you know, coming in and setting it alight against um, a club team one week and then the next week you're playing against Australia and you, your standard's nowhere near. You've got to be consistent and I think for me, personally, that's what, what I want to do. And what's it been like for you in terms of coming to training with England with other hookers from other clubs, for example, Paul McShay, Mickey Mack, um, Daryl Clark, what's it like talking and learning from those guys, I guess, as well? Yeah, it's, it's good and it's just sometimes it's nice for me to pick the brains of people who've been there and done it before and um, I like to watch how people train me. Um, I've always liked to watch, even in other walks of life, in other, other sports, boxing, um, you know, runners, uh, athletes. I like watching how they train and uh, it gives me a chance to be as close as I can possibly to my competition. And I'm, I'm there, I'm, I'm watching them train and seeing how they do certain things and taking little bits, thinking, oh, I, I, could, I could do that. And, uh, you know, how they read the game and they're speaking through it. And I, re I really enjoy that part of it. And what do you think about the, the squad you're building here at England ahead of the World Cup? Yeah, uh, brilliant. They, they were a different squad. Uh, obviously, I played in the exams the, the year before, and um, they're a different squad to what we played then. They're, they're improving, and Sean Wayne's doing a great job. He, you know, he speaks for himself and what he's done in the game. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm sure we'll, we'll be ready for that World Cup. And what's that relationship like between you and Sean? Um, it's a relationship that... I've, I've really enjoyed and got, you know, like I say, working with people of such a high calibre, um, you can only learn things. Um, and the way he is and the, man, the man mannerisms that he's got, he's, he's, he's been great with me. Um, it's obviously a short, it's been a short period of time, me knowing he's been really short and him knowing me. Um, but yeah, we, we feel like we're, you know, we're getting closer and that's just about building a relationship. Uh, it'll come over time. And just let's look ahead to the World Cup. My first game at Newcastle, obviously, we've just had a magic weekend at Newcastle. What's that like as a venue? 
it's it's fantastic. The the venues uh, brilliant. The facilities are outstanding. Um, the pitch is fantastic. That time of year as well, there'll be a lot of fans there that to watch England. It'll be it'll be electric, just like it is for Magic Weekend. It's, it's electric, and everybody enjoys playing there. And what would you say to those England fans who may be debating whether to come up or not to watch with Newcastle? <laughs> oh yeah, get there. It'll be fireworks to get there. And um, Greece and Samoa and France in your group, what are you expecting from those teams? Um, obviously Samoa, uh, France, France at, at the end of last year, a very physical team, almost um, caught me a little bit by surprise, the intensity, you know, playing in a, um, an international fixture, it goes up um, and no matter you know, who, who the names are, you know that they're playing for the badge and the shirt and so, Samoa is just such a massive, massive set and so, so many quality players, it'll be, it'll be a tough group. And hopefully eyes on that World Cup final, what would it mean to represent England in a World Cup final come November? Um, what it means mean to me, I think, from the beginnings that I started, um, and never thought maybe I could make a living. I can remember watching amateur games when I was like 11, 12 year old, and like the open age in amateur, thinking, wow, these guys are strong, I'd never be able to play amateur, like, at, at that level. And, and then to go and represent, you know, a kid from Swaziland, um, Fly, flying all the way around the world, where I represented England in France, to then come back to England, where I live, you know, where my family is, and win it, and, and get to a World Cup final, would be unbelievable.